Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I have, uh, I'm very excited today actually to um, do this uh, uh, paint along because uh, I did this a while ago just for fun because I do miss spring when the winter is too long and it snowed the last couple of days we needed the water. I really like the snow. However, I am thinking about um, how to, uh, you know, um, well, to show you this design, that I totally designed the the little bird. Of course, there was two little bird in that painting, but I'm going to do one, okay? Uh, and see if I can achieve my objective. My objective is to make something that are uh, very cute looking, but still um, very, uh, you can tell that it is very good watercolor with good skills and lots of skills in there, but simplified. Okay, so that uh, it really is not like that complicated, but sometimes it might appear more complicated. And so this is my goal and I'm going to make it simple so that you can understand and follow along. Okay, let's see. You guys can tell me how I did, okay? And now all these, um, the drawing will be uh, in my blog in the post, okay? So uh, if you go scroll down on the post, if you don't want to read all those words because I have to make it so it's like over 700 words. Uh, my daughter told me to do so. Um, and uh, so, uh, but you can scroll down and then the drawing will be there. And so it'll be easier for you. So you don't have to struggle with that, at least not before you're comfortable. Okay, so let's get started and before I talk too much, okay? Because I, if you let me talk, I can talk for a long time. As you can tell. Okay, I just uh, splashed some water right onto my paper. Paper I'm using is Arches watercolor paper. <clears throat> but um, I have used um, a Strathmore 400, I think, watercolor paper. I will... Um, show you guys and let you know that you can actually use those for this kind because it really is simplified and i'll explain um as i go okay because you're keeping um the the skill of how to do watercolor clean but um you are trying to remember those skills but without making it too complicated i think as we do watercolor if we do it too complex we um uh, risks getting the painting muddy okay now so uh, very quickly let's get started and so what i'm going to do is i will show you that i always like to uh, give the drawing of the eye and if you are doing this you would want to do that okay just use uh, some kind of a permanent waterproof marker like this micron okay and go in there and make sure that you have um get the eye all painted and waterproof so that it won't run and uh, because you know as i'm painting like i always say i have many things to think about and i don't like to worry about the eyes because this is so important the eye area right and so i have developed through the years that i just do that i just um i just uh, get that done and over with okay so the first thing is we're gonna put a layer okay you see this wiggly thing that's my design because um sometime in the spring the birds are kind of they're still younger, so I like to use that to show people that it is a young bird, okay? So we're going to just put the first layer all the way over here, okay? And I'll show you how to soften this area and our color. So I'll tell the, you the color as we paint, okay? The color is very simple. Um, we we're going to combine sepia watercolor. Sepia is kind of like a brownish gray with some... Uh, yellow ochre to make it a little bit brighter than just a uh, dark sepia okay and so i'm going to make sure that the color is nice and good okay and uh okay and so um i have uh, picked up the pigment over here okay i usually like to start somewhere around here uh, or around here where it is the darker part okay of the of the form of the head and i would call the head of this little bird um what should we call it a uh, golf ball okay because it is round okay and make sure you uh, let it come down here a little bit okay and leave a little bit of white area around the eye okay 
All right, okay. And so I'm laying down this, as I'm laying now, I'm washing the brush and make sure that it uh, has no pigment now, okay? And so what I'm going to do, this is still my first wash, okay? I always like to, you know, have the color lighter and I leave a little bit of, um, okay, of a highlight over there. Now remember, this is our first wash, okay? And, um, okay, back to pigment because as you can see, sorry about my voice, as you can see, the pigment is getting weak, okay? So we want to it to um, and while this is still wet, you can just uh, get the pigment in still, okay? Uh, I mean, get the water, uh, get the first layer, okay? So keep this a little bit, a little bit of wetness going on, okay? And then, and this is when I come in and I soften it. And so what it is, is just a clean brush. And then, because I don't want to leave a harsh line over there, okay? So I just kind of soften it, soften it a little bit. Okay, over there. Now, um, as I so this area is being softened right here. So I have some very light pigment of uh, yellow ochre, and I'm gonna drop that in there while the softening uh, wetness is still there, so that it could still be wet. Okay. All right. Okay, and if you say, hey, you know, maybe my dark area is not dark enough. Now we're still in our first layer. Okay, this dark area is not dark enough then we might, this is still kind of moist and red, uh, wet, and then we'll just um, bring back some of that sepia and yellow ochre mix, okay? And uh, just try to intensify this, um, the color of her or his, her or his head a little bit, okay? This would be very nice and simple, first layer, okay? So this is our first layer, and I'm going to Call it done. What what I mean when I say done is I'm just gonna let it rest here for now, and then I'm going to go in uh, to the other area. Let's do the beak, okay? Um, <laughs> so when I was uh, doing the watercolor, I uh, uh, during the marker, I decided to darken, you know, of course, darken the eye area, right? And I forgot um, that. Uh, and I darken the beaks too, so it's okay. Since I did that, we'll go with it, okay? And so we can do some pink spray, which is uh, one of my uh, favorite color, and mix in with just a little tag of indigo. You don't even have to do indigo, okay? And then I will put in that grayish, pink spray itself is already grayish blue, okay? First layer again, okay? A grayish blue, okay? And then, uh, I will go in and just uh, you can see that there's some harsh line. You can soften it. You don't have to. Okay, soften it is using a, a, a dryish um, a clean brush. Okay, so I will show you over my right hand. I have a little towel. I like to use towel. I have all these in my technique troubleshooting. Okay, uh, uh, video that you can see how I soften that. Okay, so now his mouth is wide open. And do you see that little mark over there? Okay, that is to make sure that his his mouth does look like a pyramid, not just a little triangle here. So I have that little mark. You don't have to uh, worry about that. But when you were um, copying the drawing, I would like you to make sure that you go in and take a look and uh, make sure you put that in there, okay? Okay, and that will give the form better. And I'm going to come in and drop a little bit of uh, Magenta pink color mixed with uh, some burnt sienna, okay? And what is that that you say, Kathy, that you're doing? What that was is I'm trying to, um, the little uh, ligament. Is it ligament? No, maybe it's not ligament. Maybe it's the little uh, membrane or tissue. We have that in human being too, right? And if you just drop a little color there, then people can see. You know, just drop that color there, okay? So we're still letting this area dry, okay? Now, uh, I will have um, over this area uh, final painting so you can follow along and it will be easier for you to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, now I'm still the sepia with a little bit of uh, yellow ochre mix, okay? So what you do is like when you're doing color like that, you can use a scratch piece of paper, okay? When you mix the sepia and then you put that in there and say, oh, is that... Um, 
No, I want to have a little bit yellow. So you put in a little bit more yellow ochre until you're totally happy. Okay, so this is a spring bird. I use a little bit happier color. Okay, so one layer. Okay, so you can see that I am slapping in the column, right? Slapping in the color over here. And then I can say that, oh, uh, you know, a natural bird doesn't look like that when the, when the body turns. It should, uh, it should be a smooth transition without those harsh colors. So what you do is that you come in here and you soften it. And I like it very, very soft. So I clean the brush and then soften it some more. So that, you you know, it suggests a separation between the head and the body, right? But not a, not a harsh line, okay? So you soften, soften it. So it's barely there. But then it's good enough that you can see that, that it's there. And then I'm going to pick up a little pigment because that's how my original drawing is. And it follow the line of the body and make a little triangle area over there, okay? Very nice, right? And still very simple, okay? Now let's go on to the wings, okay? So now the same mix. Just your sepia with a little bit of yellow ochre mix, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the whole area, that whole area. So maybe I should have some more pigment, huh? But I don't worry about things like that. If I don't have enough pigment, I go back in. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to leave a little bit of lighter color there, okay? So I start with the darker area, and then go towards the light area. Now, with this um, wing area, as you go, you might want to leave a little bit of highlight, okay? Leave a little bit of highlight here and there. You can see, when I mean highlight, I mean, you know, I just uh, leave a little bit of white area, okay? And then this area. Now, we don't have to be really good at this first layer because we're going to do second and third layer maybe maybe third layer on the top on the top of this wing just to suggest more feather and when we do that now the brush, brush is clean okay and i'm pulling this first layer this uh, pigment that i already laid down over here towards this area and all and this technique is um you know is uh also in my troubleshooting, okay, because I'm afraid you guys are now still the first layer because this layer is still wet, okay? So what did I just do? I'm just putting a little more pigment so it's more intense, okay? And then, but over here, I don't want to intense. I leave a little kind of lighter area. You can see that. That's really quite my signature because I like to do that, okay? Now, okay, so the wing is done and we're just going to let it dry, okay? So very easy. And let's kind of do the feather because we're working on the same color mix okay so we're gonna have the sepia and a little bit of um uh, the yellow ochre if you want okay and then we'll come in here okay just first layer and i think you know since it's the tail feather i might use a little more sepia okay and what i'm going to do is like uh, i'm going to slap down some color over here okay and then i will uh this is still the first layer okay Still the first layer, slap down the color over here. Okay, and then I'm going to, you can see that if you can see my uh, pencil drawing, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull out the color like towards the um, shape of the feather, okay? And then uh, try to um, do that, okay? So that's like, it's uh, already you can see that it's kind of looking featherish, but it doesn't really as of now because it's our first layer, right? So we don't worry. And we will uh, keep doing the same thing if you will trust me. Okay. Okay, now I can see that um, the brush was a little wet. Troubleshooting, right? And so I go in there and pull in a little more pigment. And then I will come in here and soften it and pulling it towards the lighter area. Okay, just uh, the direction of the feather. So make it easier for us uh, for the second layer. Okay, now. Uh, because it was the serious spring bird and I wanted this area, which is his chest, his chest is kind of higher. So I wanted to just put some kind of green in there now. So it is my green mix. Okay. So I have some sap green. Sap green is quite bright. Um, I'm going to mix that a little bit with my pearling green. Okay. So that it's not like so bright and then maybe just a tag of indigo. Okay. And then I'm going to go in here. 
and then first layer okay again okay i want to have a little green but no bird is gonna look like that so what, what am i going to do i'm going to of course do what i do okay soften soften it so it become a soft green you can see the green here you might say oh that's a reflection of the area around it yes it could be it could be because you know the bird's chest is usually white but we are just you know for fun as artists we come in here and do things like that okay and so i'm going to pull this this color over here of the ligament or whatever the membrane is just pull that over there and so it's just a little bit of magenta mix okay and just put it there so it makes it brighter now try to stay away from the green because it is you can see a reddish color right if you try to mix the two things together then what we will do what would we call that we call that mud mm, we don't want that okay now so simple we just drop that okay and uh, you know what while we're happy you know let's drop some happy color i'm gonna put a little bit of um yellow ochre there that you can hardly see okay just to brighten up the area of the chest we can do that on the second layer. We can do it now while it's wet. It's up to you, but it is so slightly and so small. Okay. Now, what are we what are we gonna do? I'm going to come and darken this area over here. I can do it now, or I can do it later. But I will decide to do it now. And so, what I'm going to do is use paint spray. Okay. And so, what is that? It's because the bird is casting a shadow on himself, right? Because his wing is there. So this is nothing but just a shadow okay kind of like a soft shadow when you when the painting is done it's good to have things like that they make it more realistic and now you can suddenly you can see the wing just uh, really stand out right now and uh, this is the part where it's uh, closer to the shadow so we're gonna do the same thing okay now um, be sure to remember to see this little mark that I make there and what is that little mark that is separate the his uh, his breasts um birds chickens and turkey whatever yummy and they all have uh bread they all have like two pieces of breast we know that right one chicken has two breasts one bird has two breasts so that's just a little separation i do that but if you forget don't worry okay so the same i'm going in with the pink spray maybe a little drop of the blue the indigo blue okay and so what i'm going to do is i know that underneath here is actually the darkest area okay so what we're doing and remember that look at this angle okay going up this angle going up why is it going up it's because um that's why i wanted to make the bird so he's not like the profile he's actually kind of a free quarter looking the uh towards us okay and so that's why the, this line is so important, right there, the shape of that line, and we preserve it or accentuate it. Now I'm softening it, okay? Because I don't want it to be a, a line, right? So just like um, what I, I talk about in the in the troubleshooting, okay? In watercolor, it's very important that as you lay down a color, you learn to soften it right away, okay? So now can you see he's looking like an egg right here, okay? now. We're going to come back and deal with that line in a minute, okay? Now, this is uh, what I'm doing. We have uh, lay, uh, lay down the basic foundation, okay, of the first layer. Now, this is my very, very fine brush. I talk about that brush all the time. You can get it at any good uh, reputable art supply. It's a, it's a man-made fiber, so it's not that hard to get. I like the man-made because it's stiff, okay? Now, so what am I going to do right now? I'm going to go in. This is what we call the second layer, okay? The second layer, but then on the edge, okay? So I'm dipping that brush with, um, you know, okay, so I, I should explain that. I dip that in the in water and clean it with the towel, dry it with the towel. And then I go to my pigment and I'm going to pick up uh, some sepia, okay? And so what I'm going to do right now is to this wiggly part, of course, and then the you know, part of his, uh, his, um, the feather that's coming out, right? So I'm actually using this brush drawing, okay? Second layer, just a little bit, okay? You see how I feather that area? So suddenly, it become more feathered uh, or more defined, okay? And we need to do things like that um, so that, uh, uh, you know, and over here too, okay? Now, 
I'm going to do a little trick and I think I'll share it with you what I'm trying to do. I don't like his head being so big, so tall over here, okay? I always like bird when they're like a smoother and I think I'm a, I must have go over the line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this as an angle, okay? And try to correct it. Okay, so <laughs> if you can believe it, I'm actually drawing inside the line, <laughs> inside the color. So I just let that part go out you know, of the, of this line that I just draw. Okay. Because I want the, the illusion that his head is uh, flatter, not like a big crown over there. Okay. So that is a troubleshooting. I just corrected a mistake. Can you believe that right in front of your eye? And uh, because I wanted you guys to see that, you know, we can do things like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, you know, with painting birds, I do things like that, you know, because this is a, uh, this is what we call the second layer, right? So the part where the bird is darker. Now this brush really had problem with uh, holding pigment, but I'm gonna still do it anyway. I should have done it with this a little bit bigger, but since I have the one, can you see that? I have suddenly intensified my second layer, okay? All the parts about a bird that we should do. Very simple, okay? You can soften it, you know, and if you do just a little bit, you don't have to. Okay, second layer. Okay, so, and um, just to be cute and fun, okay, so we will, okay, now you can see that in my drawing. I don't like the wiggly, I want it to be strict, okay, so what I do is I use my eraser, I do that a lot. Uh, that's my uh, spontaneous about uh, my painting, okay, so I, uh, I say, hey, that line really doesn't look very good when I'm painting and I will just go in there and I'll change it, okay? Just, so what did I just do? I suggested his neck, right? And so let's make it a little bit cuter. You know, uh, just still drawing, you know, uh, I'm going to have some feather coming out here, some coming out here, okay? Just to um, give you some kind of movement, okay? Still the second layer, okay? And so, yeah, this brush had a, you know, because it's so fine line, it has a hard time, so we just dip it in more, okay? So, suddenly, he, his head has, uh, his hair has movement, and that's, that's nice. Okay, that's a little trick, you know, that we put movement into otherwise. Okay, so what did I just do? I just put a little, you can just follow me, a swiggly thing over here, okay? Or you can invent your own style swiggly, and I'm coming in to soften it, because I don't want the line to be too sharp. The sharp should be over here, okay? Now, so, um, second layer, okay? I'm still, I still have my brush here and I'm going to go back to the yellow ochre. And now this area is really dry, right? And so when it's dry, I can put in some color and then I soften it. So it's not dry anymore. Now, but this is my second layer. So what I did is I'm go going to my cadmium yellow and put a, just a drop of it. So what did that just do? It brightened him. He's like a happy, spring bird okay not too sad okay at all okay now i'm going to come back and do something but now i'm going to show you uh the feather okay let's do the feather part over here okay so same thing i'm going into the uh sepia okay with my little trusty brush okay and the brush should be damp not soaking wet okay and go over there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i actually draw the feather Okay, you can see me draw the feather out. Okay, just here and there, suggesting the feather is coming out, okay? Okay, not a lot, just a little bit. And uh, uh, dry the brush and soft, you know, it doesn't... But if you like things to be more sharper, you don't have to do that even. I wish this brush can hold more pigment and still be fine line, but I think that is uh, too much to ask for. <laughs> so we will put up with it and be happy, okay? So steal the sepia ink. Do you see how I'm feathering? Just feathering, okay? Just feather, feather, feather. Okay, if you're following along with me, okay, if I'm going too fast, then you can stop it and then uh, finish it before, um, you know, you can keep going, okay? Because, uh, you know, sometimes I push for time, so I go a little fast. But most of the time, I am 
uh, I don't, I, I am a little bit faster, I guess, you know, but uh, you will be this fast. But uh, if at, in the beginning you're not, then don't worry about it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the cadmium yellow, medium or yellow light, a lighter yellow, if you don't have the name. And I'm going to ever so slightly put it there. Just to put in the happiness. Maybe I should from now on say it that way. We will share the happiness by dropping yellow here and there, okay? And so over here, right, we had done the first layer. And so now I'm going to the cadmium and I'm going to share the happiness again over here. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. That's just a little bit of yellow. Okay, so the color are very consistent. They come from here to here and then to there, okay? And uh, I'm going to do the yellow, happy yellow over there too. But uh, okay, now I'm going to, this was the brush that I just used. I'm going to go to a little bit bigger okay so this is a number two and this is a number zero i'm sure zero is smaller and i guess two is a little bit bigger okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to the, uh, put shapes of feather over here okay not hard this is our second layer okay same thing i wet the brush wet the brush in the water i dry it on the towel and then i coming up here to the sepia and pick up some of the pigment okay now this is uh, my trick that I learned as a, a Chinese watercolor painter, okay? The lower part of the feather is like a V shape over here, you know? And so this is the stroke I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you, okay? So I'm going to put in feather. Not really a perfectly symmetric V, okay? Now you can see. You know, I don't, I don't need it to be so sharp. Not a perfect symmetric V, but some kind of a V. Okay. And as I do that, then uh, you, can you see the feather start forming? And sometimes it will just be um, just the feather. I mean, just a strict, quick stroke. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and pick up some uh, bur uh, burn umber. Okay because that's I can see that that's what I do okay and then go back and forth like that okay can you see that that feather start forming okay and so what I'm gonna do is just go in and lightly I hardly touch the lightly on the top just go ch -ch -ch -ch, like that okay to soften it okay now I'm going back into the sepia and I'm doing the top part okay now the top part is not that okay the top part is a feathering touch here and there these are harder and they're sharper. Have you ever been poked by a bird before or a chicken? You know, the, down here they are harder and sharper, but up here they are actually gentler and softer. Okay, so I'm going in and not too random, you know, but uh, trying to suggest feather, softer feather, okay? Softer feather, and so how do I accomplish that? Lighter touch, okay? So this is my second layer, softer, Feather lighter touch, okay? Okay, getting more pigment, okay? Because there's more pigment here and the pigment is uh, getting a little bit less intense. Okay. So this is how I do feather and suggestion of feather. Okay, so one layer, right? And this is the second layer. Okay, maybe a little more intense because this his 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 uh, wing is like a cup or a dome. Okay, so if we put a little bit darker over here, then the dome will appear like this is lighter and that's more uh, set into the to like a to like a better explanation okay all right and then you know the same thing okay a clean brush i'm gonna come in and cut, just kind of gently kind of brush things out over here okay and then i say hey i need some more over here because that area is kind of bland okay this is the highlight right and then you we can just uh, do soft feathering soft feathering over here okay soft feathering Okay, and then that will be good. I think that's good enough. Okay, so feathering. And guess what I'm going to do? Going to the, my happy yellow, cadmium yellow. And then I'm going to put some over here. 
it's dry right over there so I can just and then some next to the highlight happy color in the atmosphere how is that is that good too and then uh you know for some reason I had green underneath the wings so I'm gonna put some indigo under here with some green color mix so maybe what I was thinking is like making it happy okay Okay, now over here, this area, you know, there's some light shining from behind, right? So we can actually make that happy color too. So let's bring some happy yellow color over here. Okay, and just uh, make sure that he is kind of, or she, he or she is kind of bright. And guess where I, else I'm gonna put in happy color? Next to the, to the crown, where his highlight was. Okay, I like to put happy color. So can you see that? I just put a little bit. So what, what we have done is just one layer and now it's the second layer. And by the time we're doing the second layer, I can tell you this part is done, okay? Now with his uh, mouth, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, with the pink spray, <clears throat> have a little soft damp brush and go get some color, okay? So it'll look more pyramid-like, okay? And over here too. Just a, a touch here and there, okay? And then we're done. And then so his beak are not as uh, as flat, okay? Now, over here, I didn't do that. And let's go back to our our little, little fine zero, size zero brush, okay? And back to the C, C pier, okay? Okay, I'm gonna uh, give him some more definition. Over here is to go get his feather going out this way, okay? So he's very cute and uh, chubby. A little bit, not too chippy, but um, I would like to, you know, have birds that are happy and you know that they look like they've been fed. Like I've talked to you when I was painting some kind of chickadee that, uh, you know, the bird in the city, like our house sparrow that I painted. I'm going to release that to YouTube really quick. And um, the house sparrow are usually pretty chubby because people fed them all the time they live in city they have learned to live among us and a lot of people like them so while they're eating lunch they feed the okay so i'm just putting some feather over there okay okay and so can you see our bird is almost done i mean like over here i just call it done because i have given it definition maybe okay in my original bird i put some happy color over here okay so back to my happy yellow cadmium medium or bright yellow of your choice, okay? And then I'm gonna put that there, make that happy, okay? Because I'm trying to, okay, now, since we use that as his, um, if I'm in the frame, as his chickadee lip color, uh, the membrane inside the mouth, I'm going to use about the same color for his foot. Now, does that make sense? Sometimes I use yellow and sometimes, uh, no, I'm not sure, uh, indigo, but sometimes, I like to use um, <clears throat> the flesh color. And so uh, today I'm going to, because I want that color to come down here, okay? So what I'm going in is my magenta color. And I have that next to my uh, burnt, burnt umber color, okay? I have that permanently in my palette. And if you want to see how I mix color, go to the troubleshooting, okay? Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in down here. Okay, just one layer. This is our first layer, okay, for the leg. Okay. We just paint it. Maybe you want to leave some highlight towards where you think that the light is coming in. And maybe we don't need to, okay? Now, I'm going to come in and define that, that little feet of his later, okay? So I'm not worried. Just first color, okay? And then first layer, okay? This is our first layer, too. Okay, over here and you see I leave that big highlight there because I want it to okay come back over here and, you know I do things like that it's not necessary <laughs> but I do okay now see our bird is almost done except I would come in with my marker and define the little feet on both sides okay now so I'm going to um, uh, 
actually if i bump my camera i'm really sorry i do that i notice i do that i will try not to do that but my camera is actually very close to my it's about my um collarbone level so it's very close to my hand so if i bump it i don't even notice but i notice it when i watch the movie uh, the video again okay. okay so i'm gonna Okay, let's continue on the on the branches, okay? So I'm going to show you a very simple way, okay? I have one branch over here, one branch over here, and now I'm going to show you a very simple way of how I do branches that could make it very realistic, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, it's very simple. I do that, I think I've shown you that before, but let's show you again, okay? And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dip my uh, brush that's, um, then brush that is uh, squish around in water and then dry, okay, into my sepia watercolor mix, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that in segment because it's broken up by his feet, right? Okay, so let's just do this area first, okay? I'm going it very, very close to his feet. That's okay, don't worry about that, okay? Okay, I'm gonna lay down because this is the lower part of the branch, okay? I'm gonna lay down this color, uh, the sepia color, and then straight away I'll go clean my brush. Okay, can you hear that? <laughs> I'm banging on my on my bowl. I'll show you that some other time. Okay, now this is a damp brush that has been dried. Okay, and then uh, so what I'm going to do is I always do it this way for a fast and uh, effective way of painting a branch. Okay, okay, I come over here and that's it. Okay, my branch is gonna stop there and give you the illusion that it keep going, but going where, you don't have to know, because that is our painting, where I don't even know. And so, now that's it. But then, this is our first layer though, okay? So I'm just going to let you see that, and then I'll come back and just do a little more of something. Okay, and then we'll keep uh, doing things like that when we, when you come to follow uh, paint along with me, okay? Now, I'm gonna do this branch and you're gonna see how it come alive in your, uh, in front of you, okay, of your eye. Okay, so I'm gonna do that because this branch go up here and where it's going, you and I don't know, but we don't really care. Okay, so it's a dark uh, color, darker sepia, okay? And I'm going to dry the brush, clean it, no pigment now, okay? I do the same as what I do here, okay? I come and soften it, okay? I come and soften it. So this, and soften this area too. So this branch look like it just jump out of the, of this main branch into the little branch. Look how, how, how tough I am with my, okay, so this is our first layer. And just to have fun, oh, maybe I should change, you know, so it will be changed to that number two, okay? And then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to the CPA color and I pick up some. Okay, now if you can see that there's a faint line over here. Okay, so I'm going to draw this out for you. There's a little paper, okay? But it's what I do, the loss and fine line, right? Okay, so from here, a branch is gonna come out and I'm just kinda let it go. You know, I have lost the line and I find it right here, okay? Same thing over here, no lost line, I'm just connected. Okay, now you might, I don't know how you feel about being able to just, uh, you know, freehand and do branches like that, but I promise you, you just practice, okay? Paint with me, and you'll be able to do that. Couple more times, and then you are, you'll be able to do lines like that. Don't even worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna do this segment. Okay, so this segment is the same thing, okay? I use my trusty Chinese brush. And then I, uh, okay, I put in the, uh, this is our first layer, okay, still first layer. I want it to be a little bit darker because he's casting a shadow down here. And so need to be darker. Okay, so I drop some darker pigment. And then now what do I do? I clean the brush and I come back, I come back and pull it out, okay? And then it will come alive, I promise you, in a, in a second, okay? So now I'm going to do this area, the same thing. But, you know, of course we have a longer area and I should, you know, you know, load more pigment onto my brush, okay? Of the strong sepia pigment, okay? So I'm coming along and I'm following along the line, which you will have from my painting. Yeah, I'm following the line and I'm doing that here, okay? All the way to butt against this little 
little totes. And by the way, I always say that. Thank you for putting up with my lack of uh, vocabulary description of uh, nature and shapes and animal parts and such, okay? Uh, because I, uh, I'm i thinking and painting and I do know a lot of vocabulary, but uh, I don't, uh, okay, so I just did, I softening the line. Okay, I just put a big dab of, of water over here while I was trying to explain to you. Now that's not quality. So what do I do? I dry my brush really quick and come and soak it up. Okay, I soak it up. Yay, another uh, problem solving right in front of your eye or trying to rescue my mistake, okay? Now, so I, I think the sun is coming down here, okay? So it's still more bright on this side and less bright on that side, okay? So we're gonna do the branch over there, okay? And But instead of doing the dark side on that side, we're gonna do it on the left side, this side on the right side, okay? Can you see how birdie is coming together? Isn't that nice? And you can do it. These are very, very good, okay, for you. Okay, and my, my brush, you can see that as it goes into that wet, wet area, what happened? The pigment actually dispersed. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? That is something that I learned when I was, uh, myself learned when I was uh, trying to learn from the uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, teachers. I don't have a teacher, but I learn either through book or I, I watch them or I go to the library and, you know, and try to decipher what they're doing, okay? Now, so, you see that? I put on the line and I, now I'm, uh, and then I soften it. Now I'm coming in and uh, do some branches again because the, just to balance the other side, you know, but maybe not, you know, not as many. Like, I think you can see that I have a branch go out here, right? I don't like that. So that was my pencil mark and I erased that because why? Um, I like the branch to grow up instead of sideways, but sometimes branches go sideways. I am a farmer by hobby. I like to um, plants and uh, I take care of my pear tree, an apple tree. <sighs> and I'm just blowing off the eraser mark, okay? Okay, now should we Put a line over here to suggest about this branch. I think I will, you know, so you can see that it's like a, a pyramid. It's a fat branch. It's not a soft branch. Isn't that pretty? Now, those are kind of thing that, you know, you can, you can actually change it. You don't have to follow, follow what I wanted to do. Now, what I'm going to do is I, I should use the very, very small fine line, but I don't. I'm going to do the top part of the branch right now with the sepia color, okay? So lost line and fine line, okay? It all, it come all the way, all the, all, almost all the way to the bird over here, okay? You don't have to draw the whole line. It's better or more artistic um, to just, um, you know, draw some part of it and let the viewer with art, let the viewer fill in the, fill in the blank, okay? You know, and then I come in with my color and just kind of soften it, okay? Now, I really wanted to put a shadow from the bird here because that is more accurate and I like to be accurate because my maestro is watching. She watch all my stuff and I don't want to um, just forget this part, okay? So what did I do? I make some indigo just right under his, uh, his or her belly, okay? I just drop a shape right there just to indicate to you that there is a shadow over there, okay? She does cast a shadow onto the branch, okay? Uh, okay, right there. So just to make it a lot more correct. And now, you know, um, I'm going to use this, the number three, and show you how do I do the second layer. Okay, so we just did this, and that was just the first layer, okay? Very, very simple. Now I use more intense pigment okay of the of the sepia and what so i come in i come in and and draw the branch and how the line of the branch grow okay here and there okay see see how it grow wow Okay, I follow along the curve now because uh, this is a very happy part of the curve. You can actually go and put more pigment there and make it look a little bit darker. Can you see how that just in front of your eye? 
this whole branch is taking place and has become a real branch, okay? So that's the ring, I guess the ring of the tree, okay? So I'm going in, and so there's a little curve over here. I'll just follow that, okay? Do the same thing, but not too much detail now because it's you want more detail on the on the lower side and less as uh, the as the as the branch is moving away from you okay so you can still do some detail here and there okay can you see that can you see that like every time there is a bend okay you can drop some darker color there wow doesn't that look like a branch suddenly it become alive to you and it is just that easy but do some practice if it is not so easy right away okay Okay, look at that. Do you see what happened? I just do the same thing, okay? And I take a brush and I show you some of the line. It can go even, you know, into the whitish area, okay? You can even go into this whitish area. Because I don't like the whitish area to be too white, but not as dark as down here, okay? Because you want all the white to be around his face. People's eyes are drawn to the white. That's uh, what I learned as an artist. Okay, so if you don't want, this is a supporting part of our bird, right? And if you don't want the white to um, to be down here, then we don't white, we, we, we put a light, light wash of color, okay? Now let's do the same fun part, okay? There's a curve here, and I'm gonna like put some darker color. Okay, and just uh, kind of come here and soften the line. These lines are a little bit uh, too obvious. Not that pretty, so I'm gonna, you know, soften it, okay? I'm just using some sepia to soften this line so they're not so sharp. Sharp line doesn't belong to where the supporting area is. It only belongs to the focal point. Okay, so this is our second layer, okay? Now, if you have, you know, if, if this uh, doesn't come natural to you, I promise it will, it, it will. When you do it, like I'm gonna make another tree the other bird on the other side, let's do that, okay? And then you will have time to practice the branch, okay? Oh, you know, one of my, <laughs> you know, my pinchers, I don't know, uh, people take my pinchers image and go put it to their blog as they're discussing art, right? And so I, I you know, I, I, I wanted to know what they're using my image for. And uh, I find this Scarlet guy, he was talking about learning to uh, draw a tree and so my my tree i guess he must like it okay now i'm going to you know all of my my tree that my all of my birds that i ever painted uh, was in his well he took three of my I, i'm really you know surprised he must really like my branch and uh, he took it and uh, you know use it uh, as a reference picture but nobody ever asked me i guess that's the thing today right people don't ask me Hey, can I use your painting to use in my blog? I guess that'd be okay because it's public, it's on printers, you know. But you know, I would like it if you guys use it. Like, give me a reference, but don't sell, don't sell. You know, I will teach you how to do your design your own painting, so you don't have to copy can, okay? Uh, in some future videos, so you can actually take what I teach you and then you do it yourself, okay? And it will be your own creation and without copy canning me. Okay, if you really one day wanted to, you know, sell. Okay, now, so you can see. Now, so what I'm going to do, very simple, okay? Go back to my trusty bigger brush because I'm going to drop some pink flower there. You know, I use uh, I use uh, uh, magenta here. So I'm just going to use magenta for the flower. And with a little bit of leaf and maybe just barely some background. Now, let's... Um, get started and then and I'll explain to you because this is not the focal point anymore so we don't have to go in and draw flowers okay we can just drop them and do all kinds of shapes so what I'm doing what am I doing I am uh, actually dropping flower here and there uh, with um, shapes that look like flower I guess and but they are not really flowers and it you know so what I'm doing is I'm drawing with my brush okay so I slap down. You see how nice that is? How nice that is? Okay, and then I use some water. I'm coming here and soften it. Okay, because I don't want a lot of a lot of fine line. Okay, because this is our focal point, right? 
So by the time you paint a lot with me, you will see how uh, an artist work, okay, with their focal point and not focal point, because I will, every time I will explain to you what I'm doing. And I like to do that because I think, you know, if you just see an artist just, you know, you know, putting in her drawing, you don't know what she's doing. You really have no idea what she's doing, okay? And um, I like to explain and go with you. So my, my watercolor painting with you, and then I put it here, then I make the video, I'm not, uh, with music in the background, I try some of those. Actually, you see some of those in my beginning one, but I think that I think that this is fun. Okay, this is fun that I'm talking to you as I'm painting. Then you know every step, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what I'm thinking, and uh, how to become an artist. Okay, and what artists do and what they think. Okay, it can even even be that faint of color. Okay, but. Okay, the whole part is faint, and I say, hey, I don't want it to be so faint. So I go in to and drop some, uh, drop some more pigment. Okay, so it become, what do you become? It become uh, not flat. Okay, now let's try to do a flat layer again. Okay, and I'll show you again the second time. Okay, now this has become a kind of like a flat layer. Okay, because everything is about the same color. But actually, it's kind of wet, so I don't want it too wet. Soak up some of the color, and then I go in and go into the more pigment. So you see the tip of my painting, of my brush like pigment, right? I'm going to just drop in. Okay, so now it become more alive, right? At least I hope so. I try to, you know, it's not so flat. Okay, um, if I wanted to, I can actually put some red color in there but i'm not going to because i just really want you to see that bird isn't she isn't he cute okay now the fat tummy okay i put the effort to put that line there of course i wanted to show you what i'm going to do just use some um pink spray okay and i accentuate the line okay now you can see the line and i separate his breast into two breasts and then a strict way i come in here and soften it i soften it okay so that he become, <laughs> to me, it's more cute, a fat breast and a fat breast, okay? And then it just it's just more consistent with how nature is because of this line going up here, right? So he's not a profile. So what is a profile? A profile is like, okay, this pumpkin. Okay, if I just use that, okay, I have this here to put my needle there. Okay, this is a profile. Now, but if I rotate the pumpkin and go this way, then that's what happened, okay? That's what happened to the bird over here. I don't, I don't want him to be this way. I want him to look sideways like that. Okay, I have pin needle on that pin cushion. That pin cushion was uh, my friend uh, give that to me, and I put the pin there because sometimes we use pins. Maybe someday I will be able to explain to you the occasion. Now at this point, what you can do is you can. Um, now this is more like a cute uh, whimsical, you know, and uh, but it is real. Well, it is real art, okay? Because you have used everything that you know, okay? Oh, and just let let me before I no, I'll explain to you. I forgot one thing. Okay, let's uh, go back to this number two brush and go to the sepia and let's give him some feather on the head, okay? Yeah, how could we forget that? Let's not, okay? Now we're going f the shape, okay? The shape of the head let's not put a straight line there because then suddenly you you um you've um uh, make the your audience confused about you know why is a straight line okay so the feather need to follow the shape of the head okay it is not a straight line unless you wanted it to be a straight line okay so i'm going in back in and softening it okay so now suddenly the head is not as boring okay and then that's the feather and i think i have Okay, now, but if you want it to be more like a painting that you frame and you want a little bit background, so uh, now now is the time where you can see over here. This is my original. Ori I actually do this original painting of, on Strathmore watercolor paper, okay? Those paper are good if you try to paint clean and don't go in there and mess with your painting so much, okay? If you follow me when I'm painting, then you will learn that because then it will become a habit to you that you won't mess with your painting too much, okay? So 
I invite you, of course, I wanted you to keep following my painting and we'll do really a lot of fun things, okay? And this is where you drop in the background, okay? Now I do that a lot. I think I may not do that today. I do that a lot in all of my painting. And so go look and uh, in my other painting, go towards the end. That's usually where the background is. And then you can do that, okay? You can drop in the background, like on your painting right there. Okay, let me drop it for you. <laughs> Uh, I changed my mind again, okay? Just a little bit. Okay, so what I did is I'm going to use a clean brush with some water, okay? You can see that there's no pigment, okay? Because I like you and I hate to see you frustrated. So if this is your first time and you pick this painting as your first time, you see that some of the sepia ink come down? No, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so we're using indigo, indigo color, okay? And that's all that there is. Okay, and you say, well, this is really flat, you know, Kathy does not like flat. And then you should do it over here and some and bring it out over here too, okay? I do not like flat, okay? So what I will do is, you know, I will gently go and get some pink spray, okay? And put, pink spray is dark, right? And so I put it towards where I know it's the darker. And suddenly even the background come alive. Okay, even the background come alive and it's not flat, okay? Now, that's all I'm gonna do because I wanted to spend time to show you what I do with my, with his micron, a sharp micron, with his little feet, okay? So what I do when this is all dry, I'll come in and draw it again and separate his toes, okay? And do the same thing on this side, okay? This is my highlight, if you can see, okay? I will draw his toes out. Okay, just simple. Do that. I didn't want to forget that. Hey, I hope you make it to this point. Thank you so much for painting along with me. This is um, two layer, all right? One, two, two layer, two layer. Mainly everything is two layer. So that's how simple you can do it. You know, very, very much, very easy. You can do it, okay? So I hope you try. And let me know if you get frustrated or you just absolutely love it. Just let me know, okay? I would love to hear from you. And I will probably put a leaf here and there and finish this up. And then this painting will be in this uh, square right here. And you can watch it and follow along. Okay, love you guys. And remember to subscribe to me, okay? And like my painting and then I'll do more. Bye-bye.